So I wanted to give you an example of applying situated learning, not just to like designing instruction, but to workplace as well, um, because I think that this theory has so much potential for even rethinking how we do some things. Um, so I'm actually kind of hoping you'll like dive in and, and um, really get into this one. But <clears throat> what I've got right here, this is a poster presentation that I gave uh, last year on a situated practicum designed for workplace learning and credentialing uh, with uh, Jim Ellsworth and uh, who works design stuff for the Army. And um, <clears throat> we were actually uh, contracted, uh, I had a grant from Office of Personnel Management to do a, a range of different things with them. And one of the things that we looked at was this uh, workplace practicum. And um, this is just some, a little bit of overview information um, that, you know, on the federal workforce, <clears throat> they serve 430 or so departments or agencies um, across the federal government and HR positions across these agencies range across all classifications of the federal employee classification system. So what's expected for an HR professional who's a GS-5 or GS-7 is very different from what's expected for an HR professional who is a GS-12 or even a GS-15. Um, and there was very little standardization of what the necessary skills or competencies are across these different classifications. <clears throat> so in uh, 2016, uh, OPM initiated a front ends front end needs assessment with the goal of closing these critical HR gaps. Um, so they conducted an analysis identifying well, you know, what were some of the root causes, and um, that included lack of standard professional development, inconsistently applied career growth, lack of commitment across agencies to a common approach, undefined career progression or competency requirements, um, to name but a few. These are probably sounding very familiar. <laughs> you might be thinking, oh yeah, uh, I see these things where I'm at as well. Um, so based on this analysis, they uh, sought to apply a common technical competencies and standards across federal HR and create a common core curriculum um, for developing and assessing those competencies and then making training available. Um, and then they worked with a previous contractor to develop foundational courses that were largely designed around knowledge retention, a little bit of knowledge transfer uh, design and evaluation. Um, but for credentialing and eventual mastery of in certification purposes, you have to move beyond just knowledge retention and even basic knowledge transfer. Um, so we used a framework um, that Will Tallheimer developed where he identified three specific levels of training and evaluation, at, at which point credentialing and certification become possible. Um, Decision-making competence, task competence, and, and um, or uh, task, task competence near and task competence delayed. So uh, let me scroll down here actually real quick. So to help accomplish all of this, they developed this career spanning curriculum um, and this is a, this is, I did not design this, but we helped design parts of it and we helped evaluate and test some of it. Um, but they brought us in to help focus on right here, in particular, this staffing specialist curriculum, um, which is a very different design from all of the other courses in the curriculum. Um, so we uh, came up with the idea of creating a situated practicum uh, which means, uh, you know, first we identified what are the proficiency level um, that people should have before they even start the practicum. In other words, you know, it doesn't make sense for a GS-5 or somebody like that to start in when they're very early career um, because you're not going to be credentialing somebody when they're just starting off in their career typically. This is for closer to about mid-career, maybe a little bit past mid-career. Um, so you can see, you know, aiming at about grade, grade levels 11 or 12. Um, and this is, again, federal employee <laughs> grade levels. Uh, this is not K-12. So the theoretical foundations for our design 
um, were uh, we wanted a, a very strong emphasis on application of their knowledge and skills and competencies in authentic situations. So we designed a situated practicum employing principles from cognitive apprenticeship, as well as Schoen's concept of the reflective practitioner, where learners work with their supervisors and an instructor to identify authentic tasks and problems in their workplaces that they work on. And then they identify the competencies that they demonstrate in and through their work and the job products and um, submit that product to the instructor for evaluation. Uh, the reason we have them work with a um, supervisor and an instructor to identify the tasks and which competencies are going to demonstrate is because that allows this uh, situated practicum to be responsive to different contextual needs. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, different agencies approach things a little differently. And while you want to standardize, you still really need to allow for flexibility. Um, and and this, this approach allows uh, well, we say it right here, allows the employees, supervisors, and instructors to tailor the practicum to specific agency needs. Um, so, for example, you might be able to demonstrate the same competencies through different tasks, and, you know, an agency might have a particular thing that they're focusing on at that time, and so it makes sense for an employee to demonstrate their competencies by working on something that's a, a specific agency need at that time. Um, so we had three goals for the practicum and designed that accordingly. We wanted to make tacit knowledge and the mentor and mentee more explicit by using cognitive task analysis as an activity and a strategy in the practicum. Um, uh, tacit knowledge presents known issues in bridging expert knowledge and performance for those learning to master the same domain. So we actually built in some strategies where we try to prompt the mentor, who's the expert um, or the supervisor, to make certain things more explicit, to, to move uh, expert knowledge from being as tacit to being much more explicit. Um, and then we want uh, the person going through those to be able to articulate problem solving frameworks and approaches to make that tacit knowledge more explicit. And then we want them to demonstrate transfer and application of uh, different content principles and practices from, you know, that are, occur across the staff and curriculum to actual on the job practice. So this is really all getting at, okay, all this stuff in your head, we want to make sure that you can apply this in the workplace and that you can demonstrate these competencies. And they were very keen on credentialing that. And so a situated learning approach uh, really is a great match for this sort of problem or need. <clears throat> so this just summarizes real quickly the development process and SME engagement. And this is summarized in that handout, um, the PDF version that I gave you as well, um, just kind of how we went through working with SMEs um, and you know, focus groups to identify the characteristics and, and things like that. So if you're really interested in that kind of minutia, uh, you're welcome to do that. Now for uh, the final design and contextual constraints, we incorporated activities and reflections that focused on helping the expert supervisor articulate more in their role. And in addition to completing the on-the-job tasks and providing back a work report and work products, learners had to complete some reflection and articulation of learning during the practicum that explicitly asked them to summarize what their problem solving process was and how that is evolving. Um, so that's part of the, the class requirement rather than the on the job uh, requirement. Um, we also created opportunities for the mentor and mentee to identify current or past examples of complex issues and map out typical features of the problem or novel features of the problem, like does something seem off or wrong or different here? How will they or did they approach it? What existing procedures or protocols were helpful? What standards and expectations are applicable? what artifacts or resources are or would be useful, and then generate a model together for decision making. So this is all really trying to pull in the context of application and the context of work and the decision making, both 
the decision-making process as well as the decision-making context. Um, in particular, you know, trying to identify like, okay, what are the important standards and expectations here? And what are artifacts or resources in the working environment that are useful? Um, and then we developed a rubric for evaluation of on-the-job performance. This is a very extensive rubric because it all depends on which competency they're focusing on. Um, so there's elements for all different competencies and what that would look like. That, that really is what took the longest time to develop. Um, but basically, the, the, the design of this can be summarized by uh, we have a prerequisite knowledge check before anybody can actually start the practicum to make sure they're ready for it. And then we have a field-based um, experience where, in which we gather field-based evidence of performance and that can lead to credentialing. So the rest of this just summarizes notes on the prerequisite knowledge check, um, the rubric with a few examples. And like I said, you can take a look at that if you want in the in the detail. So that's that's it. Just a very quick example that I thought I would share with you for how um, I've used situated learning in some of the um, things that I have built or been a part of a, in my own career. And in particular, I thought you might find it helpful looking at this not just in a learning specific context, but how we apply that to workplace learning and development as well.